Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Tigers Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Schulte, and let's just get into it and get into it quick and fast and enjoy the moment that was history at Comerica Park in game one of a uh, split doubleheader last, uh, yesterday afternoon. This pod- podcast is being recorded on Sunday, April 24th, 2022. So April 23rd, 2022 is a day which if you're a Tigers fan who was there either via radio, TV, or actually the had the, the ability to be at the ballpark. First of all, if you were one of the 37,000 people in attendance on for that game, um, I, 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 I'm envious of you. Um, secondly, if you had the chance to sit and listen to it live or watch it live, it was just an amazing moment. Miguel Cabrera got his 3,000th career hit. It was a single to right, um, a ground ball single off of Antonio Sensatella. And um, it really speaks to to who Miguel Cabrera is when Jose Iglesias, one of his former teammates, CJ Crone, one of his former teammates, were actually congratulating him on the field along with the Tigers uh, dugout and bullpen and the entire Tigers team and the entire the entire the entire Comerica Park crowd. It was really a, a great moment and I was so proud and so happy to be a part of it. Just listening on the radio, um, I've been lucky enough to hear his 500th career home run and his 3000th career hit. Uh, I will hopefully be lucky enough to hear his 600th career double, which he will hopefully get on Tuesday. That will put him in some elite company. So here's some of the company that he's in already. Only seven players have 500 or more career home runs and 3,000 or more hits. Those include Henry Aaron, Eddie Murray, Rafael Palmero, um, Albert Pujols, Willie Mays. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just an amazing it's an amazing feat. Um, Babe Ruth doesn't have 500 home runs, career home runs, and 3,000 hits. He's got 714 home runs, but he doesn't have 3,000 career hits. Miguel Cabrera has more hits than Babe Ruth. That's just amazing. That's just amazing. He's got more hits than Lou Gehrig. He's got more hits than Joe DiMaggio. Like you think of these players, Mickey Mantle, these Hall of Famers that that he has more hits than, and it's just it's just an amazing thought of what he's done. And <clears throat> so he's only one of three Detroit Tigers to get his 3,000th career hit in a Tigers uniform. The other two are Al Kaline and Ty Cobb. He will be, once he gets his 600th career double, which would probably happen sometime this week, he will be one of only three players to have 500 home runs, 600 career doubles, and 3,000 career hits. Albert Pujols and Willie Mays are the other two or I'm sorry, Albert Pujols and Hank Aaron are the other two players to do that. His resume is unparalleled. It is just amazing to see what this man has done. And most of it as a Detroit Tiger, 15 years as a Tiger. He came up in 2003 uh, with the Florida Marlins, and then, of course, Detroit made the trade to get him and Dontrell Willis from Florida for Andrew Miller and really a bag of balls. Um... I think Cameron Maven was in that trade and and some other smaller time players that Burt Baton Hop and, and players like that. Um so history was made yesterday. History should have been made Thursday. And Aaron Boone is a punk. I'll just put it out there right now. Aaron Boone, the man- manager of the New York Yankees, is a punk. There are times when the game is greater than your team. And, oh, I understand he's playing to win and he's supposed to win. You weren't going to win that game. 
There is no way you were going to win that game. It was one nothing when Miguel Cabrera came up with with one out and and men on second and third. And there was no way that you were going to win that game. Even though it was only one nothing at the time. Pitch to him. Let him get his 3000th hit. Oh, well I I I I wanted the match up with the lefty lefty. All right, that's fine. But at this point History and the game of baseball is more important than a team win. It just is. And and I'm I'm look, I'm 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 glad that that Yankee fans and Yankee broadcasters and really Yankee players and staff at least understood the reaction of the fans because Detroit fans were livid when he intentionally walked Cabrera in the in the eighth inning. They were hot. And um, rightfully so, in my opinion. Um, but it was one of those things that you just you just don't allow that to happen you don't sit there and go oh well i'm intentionally walking him he was at 2999 career hits he'd gone over three previously so what makes you think that you were gonna why did you think he was even gonna get a hit off the lefty i mean let's be realistic i mean i understand he's cabrera but he went over three before that so obviously the way that you were pitching him worked you changed your strategy and pitched him in a proper way because the night before he had he went 3 for 4 so why not pitch to him instead you get the lefty lefty matchup that you want and Austin Meadows doubles and you get you end up giving up two runs and you lose the game 3 to nothing so that that worked out really well didn't it it's the baseball gods baby it's karma you should have pitched to Cabrera You'd have been out of the inning when you'd only been down one zip. Of course, Gregory Soto then pitched an amazing ninth, and you lost anyway, but still. There you go. So Cabrera gets his 3,000th hit, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really, really... Detroit is 6-9 and nine this year, and I'm just so frustrated with this team. So they dropped two out of three to the Yankees. This is after taking two out of three on the road against Kansas City. They come home, drop two out of three to the Yankees. And then they outscore the Colorado Rockies 17-9 to nine in three games. And drop two out of three to Colorado. You score 13 runs against Colorado in the first game of a doubleheader. And then you score two runs in the second game of the doubleheader and two runs in the, the game that was for the series. You could have taken two out of three against Colorado, which is a decent team. They were nine and five coming into play today, so now they're 10 and five. You could have been seven and eight, a game under 500. For that matter, you could have swept that series if you had played if you had played better yesterday, last night, and, and this this afternoon. If you had pitched better last night and this afternoon. And I won't even say that it... Look, Bo Brisk came in and... and and Look, I don't know if it's pronounced Brisky or Brees. Dan Dickerson's been pronouncing it Brisky. Um, I thought I had read somewhere that he actually pronounced it Brisk. But he pitched well. Gives up three runs in five innings. So execute better against the opposing team. You know, they scored two runs in the bottom of the ninth. Harold Castro came up with men on second and third. To, he could have won the game for him. And he strikes out. He knows what he's going to get from Alex Colomay. He knows it's a cutter and a cutter and a cutter and a cutter and a cutter. Change the way that you approach things. Because you know what you're going to get. Make the adjustment. 
that's the problem that I have is is with with some of these Tigers players. They don't make adjustments in game. They don't make adjustments based on what they're seeing from previous batters. You get a guy who's 70% cutter. It's pretty safe to say that he's going to throw a cutter to you. If he throws you a fastball and beats you with a fastball, more power to him. Tip your hat. Hey, you, you beat me. But you know he's going to throw a cutter. At least two out of those three pitches. Make the adjustment. Get up a little further in the batter's box. Make the adjustment. Do what you have to do. Be smart. Be an intelligent baseball player. Don't just be a baseball player. This is Harold Castro after coming off of a four for five day in game one of the doubleheader that the Tigers won 13 nothing. So I'm really of two minds about this team in 15 games into the season, and it is only 15 games into the season. Offensively, they haven't shown me that they're going to be consistent, but I saw that in spring training, to be honest. Um, Riley Green will be coming up in June or so and providing, hopefully, a little energy. But I just don't see this offense... You know, the, the, the Javi Baez isn't playing up to his contract. Jonathan Scope isn't playing up to his contract. Robbie Grossman is getting is, is starting to get it together. But, you know, Spencer Torkelson is, is doing okay. He's having a so-so start to his rookie year. Akil Badu is not showing flashes of what he, or is not showing what he was last year. So, at this point, to be 6-9 and nine with the offense per, uh, playing as badly as it has, performing as badly as it has, and your bullpen keeping you in things, and Andrew Chafin isn't even in your bullpen yet, that's impressive. And you're also missing Matt Manning and Casey Mize from your starting rotation. Now you got Michael Alexander and Bo Breesk is pitching, who pitched well yesterday. I don't know what's going on with Mike with Tyler Alexander. He hasn't pitched well the last two days, the last two starts. But something's up there. So right now your rotation is 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 Eduardo Rodriguez, um, Michael Pineda, Tarek Skubal, Tyler Alexander, sorry, Bo Breesk and Tyler Alexander. <laughs> your bullpen's keeping you in games Andrew Chafin should be coming back uh, later this week if I'm AJ Hinch and I'm not so take it for what it's worth but if I'm AJ Hinch I actually I don't bring Chafin back until um, the, the, the series in LA Granted, it's a long trip from wherever Toledo is to L.A., but I don't bring him in until I don't bring him up until then. Until then, because you don't want him pitching in Minnesota where it's freezing. They're talking snow showers on Tuesday and Wednesday. You just don't want to do that. But who am I to make that call? Uh, in other news. Victor Reyes is on the 10-day injured list with a hamstring strain. Uh, Derek Hill just came off of the injured list for a hamstring strain. He took his place on the roster. Daz Cameron is back in Toledo. I believe they, uh, well, they reactivated uh, Javier Baez today uh, and sent Willie Castro back down to Toledo. They also optioned uh, Romy, uh, Roni Garcia to Toledo, which will make... Um, give them the flexibility that they need. My guess is is that they're going to wait on that roster move until until uh, 
Chafin is is better, and they'll 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 bring him back up. I don't. I honestly don't know. I don't know how they're going to do that. But um, so he's back down in Toledo. Casey Mize and Matt Manning are both um, feeling well and and doing rehab work down in Lakeland. So we'll see how that goes for them. Um, um, Kyle Funkhauser has been moved to the 60-day disabled list because of his shoulder strain. Kind of worried about that, but in that same respect, we'll we'll see where that goes because that that could just be a matter of um, clearing some roster space while he rehabs. So we'll see how that how that works out. Um, so the Tigers this week will go to Minnesota and then to L.A. and play the Dodgers. Uh, before coming home to start the month of May. Um, Minnesota is a place where they've had, it's it's a house of horrors for them. And oh, by the way, Byron Buxton is playing out of his mind. So I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not, I'm not thrilled with the, what, with the way that this week is going to look. I'm really not because this is a week where if you play, if, if you play 500 road baseball this week, you're saying something about your ability as a team. If you don't, it's what everybody expected of you. If you want to make a statement as the Detroit Tigers at this point, take take two out of three in Minnesota and take one out of three, you know, take at least one in LA. Finish the road trip three and three. I'd be happy with that. We'll see where that goes, but that's that's um, that's how I'm looking at it right now. So, <clears throat> if you want to get in touch with the show, you can at Podcast Tigers on Twitter, Tigers Baseball Podcast at Gmail dot com. It's the world's longest email address, and I'm proud of that. Thank you very much to Anchor for the distribution of the podcast. You can also catch us on our YouTube channel. And uh, we will catch up with you guys next week. Tigers are off tomorrow. They'll be pitching, playing in Minnesota on Tuesday. Eduardo Rodriguez will be taking the slab for the Tigers. And we'll see how that goes. With that, I am going to say so long, everybody. Thanks for listening. I'm Chris Schulte. Go Tigers.